So today we're going to be doing the O2 sensors upstream, sensor one, bank one, on this 2006 Nissan Maxima. On these, the sensor is back behind here, back way back in there. Um, gonna have to jack up the car and go in from the side. It's a whole lot easier if you take off the tire. I didn't bring anything to remove the tire, but right in between the tie rod end and the frame, subframe, you could get your arm up in there. Um, so we have a link in the description for the Bosch O2 sensor for the right part number because they have a lot of different options. This one is a particular for the five wire. And like I say, the for the bank one, the way you can tell on Nissans, it's closest to the firewall. So cylinder one is gonna be on the uh, left side when you're looking at it from the an angle. So you can see here, this is the connector for it. I don't know if it makes too much sense. It goes down in behind the exhaust there. So now we do have the Bosch O2 sensor. It's a factory OEM replacement so it's got the plug already on it so you don't have to worry about wiring it in you just push down on this tab here push down and then pull up on the grate the driver's coming apart <laughs> and then you can just separate those so this pulls right out but if you come up through the wheel here it'd be easier if you take off the wheel but i did not bring the stuff with me it's this job to do that but you get your arm in <laughs> of a reach up in here and then you can reach the O2 sensor it's right there on the manifold right now I got it broke loose finally Ooh, that was fun try not to break the power steering pressure switch all right there's the old O2 sensor back on. I really didn't need to pull it. I just didn't want to be pulling on it, breaking it when my arm was going down in there. All right, so you want to have your car running. Let me show you here. So we're going to have the check engine light on on the right there. You want your temperature to be about operating temperature, so about halfway. So just let it run for about 10 minutes or so just to get them good and warm. So you want to disconnect the mass airflow. All right, there we go. So you just unplug that. What we're doing is we are resetting the learned air fuel ratio by doing this. Wait for the check engine light to come on, start it up. Give it about five seconds. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Turn that off. I'm going to plug this back in. <clears throat> All right, so heated oxygen sensor. It was P0031 that we had originally, which was heated oxygen sensor, he heater bank one, sensor one low. And then we had um, our P1148, which was closed loop bank one. So P0113 is intake, temperature sensor circuit, and mass airflow sensor circuit. That's what we unplugged to try to reset the fuel mixture. Let's go ahead and clear codes. It says cleared. So now we're just going to take the car for a test drive. We have about roughly 20 miles or so to reset the heated catalyst on it. So we make sure everything's operating like it's supposed to. And there you go. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we will get back with you. Appreciate it and take care. Bye. All right, so I wound up getting this to fit up in there so I can get it angled here. So it sits in about like that and you're able to actually get some leverage on it with a long reach to crack that sucker loose. Um, it sits down in the exhaust. The heat shield kind of comes up a little bit so it's kind of one of the flat 
um, styles won't work. So this guy, if it was the extended one that comes out a little bit, would have made my life a whole lot easier, but it's okay. Still worked. It just had about half a turn that you could get on there. But I was able to get on there, crack it loose, and just bring it out with this. I'm not sure if you ever swivel head ratchet or not. Sometimes they're great, sometimes they are a pain, but for me, I like a little bit of leverage. You know, I don't have to use as much muscles that way, but uh, yeah, so the sensor, um, all in all, it wasn't too bad. It did end up taking me a little bit longer. Um, it took me about 40 minutes to change it. That's with jacking it up and then getting it um, up in there. You do want to be careful not to break that power steering sensor. Um, it is right in the way, like when you're going to crack it loose with this setup. And this one has a longer reach, so it brings it out a little bit away from the sensor. So if you do have a shorter one, it could probably uh, clear it pretty easy. But like I say, I didn't think too much about it. Anyways, you guys have a good day.